I have found a platform where I could be a mother and an entrepreneur as well. So now I'm not just a stay-at-home mom, but a mompreneur. But not only that, because my business is an international business from the Philippines to Singapore to many countries in Asia, and because we have Filipinos all over the world, I am also touching the lives of many Filipinos. And for, I live in a small town in Mindanao. So imagine a mompreneur building an international business from the comforts of her home using a cell phone most of the time. Okay, so now I am not just a stay-at-home mom. I am not just a mompreneur, but I am a mompreneur of Mindanao, Philippines. And thanks to Avita. Thank you to Avita for giving me that opportunity. And tonight is a business opportunity presentation on what we call the BOP. Now, what is this BOP? It is an opportunity for our guests, our friends, our loved ones, and even our family members to get to know what this Avita platform is all about. We want to be able to give the right information to each one of our guests here tonight. And of course, over on Zoom, I'd like to see my Zoom friends giving us a big, big wave. Hello, everyone. Yay, wow, they're so obedient. Thank you. So that's what this VOP is all about for all our guests who are here to find out more about what this Avita can give you and your loved ones. And today we are very, very blessed. Ask me why. I so so low. Please ask me why. Yeah, and that's the kind of energy I want to see from each one. Well, why? Because our speaker is, if I'm the trailblazing mompreneur, he's the trailblazing man who is one of the pioneering leaders of Avita. In fact, he's the one who helped create our Avita education system, the very foundation of our business here in Avita. And because of that, his you know, mission in life is to really help as many people as he can to make each one of us as successful like as just like him. And who wants to be like a person who can travel the world, help as many communities as he can, from Thailand, India, Africa, who's able to live a very good lifestyle in, with his family, stay humble. I think that, that that's the key, right? Staying humble. Who wants that kind of lifestyle? I, I, I'm seeing a very, very few hands. Come on, guys. Who wants that kind of lifestyle? Okay, and the Zoom? Over on Zoom, who wants that kind of lifestyle? Raise your hand, Zoom friends. Yes, I can see Joe and Kat and Betsy and Dr. Gail. Hi, everyone. So there you go. We want that kind of lifestyle. And that what, that's what his topic will be tonight. To talk about what this Avita business can give to us, can bring to us, so that we can also bring this to as many people as, he can, as we can, just like him. And without much further ado, I'd like to introduce to you the man behind my success and everyone's success here, our Pearl Ambassador, Alvin Young. Thank you very much for that. Thank you for your warm welcome, please. Ladies and gentlemen, please give for that a warm round of applause. Yeah. Thank you very much. Namaste. Yeah. I'm very uh, excited, very honored to have a chance to speak with you guys on this platform. Wow, it's been two and a half years or more than two and a half years since my last uh, business opportunity talk. Yeah. So, uh, and thank you for being present here. Can you maybe high five the person next to you and say, good to see you here tonight. Yeah. Really good to see you here, yeah? Hopefully tonight will be the start of a beautiful tomorrow and forever, yeah? 
I've decided to entitle this uh, my my short talk tonight five reasons, and I, as I look back, uh, it's been twenty years in this network marketing business journey, and um, it's been an exciting journey. And I look back at my reason for starting to build this business and how it has panned out. I hope that my sharing tonight, my story. My reason is very personal, but I hope that some of this reason or one or more of them will make an impact on you because once upon a time, it was somebody who shared on the same stage about their reasons for starting a successful business that's made a monumental, astronomical Im uh, impact on me that made me got started. So, are you ready? Yeah, I think every one of us have a career of our own. And myself, I started off working hard, studying hard, get good grades. This is what I've been programmed when I was young. Yeah, and then when you get good grades, you come out, you look for a good job. And then you work hard and uh, hopefully you'll be happy, you'll be rich. To be successful. How many of you follow this formula? Wow, we all have the same parents, yeah, <laughs> or the same teachers, okay? Um, I started off like that. I got a scholarship in the Singapore Armed Forces. And I, of course, I worked hard in school because they told me that as a scholar, you have to get first class honors. If not, you are gone, you know? And um, managed your first class honors, came back, worked very hard. And eventually, I went on to the private sector and climbed the corporate ladder. How many of us here climb corporate ladders? Well, we all look to the left and we see each other. I look to the right, also we see each other. Nothing wrong or bad about that. It's just that uh, as we collected more experiences, at some point in time in all our lives, something came along and then changed the trajectory. Yes? Yeah, all of us. Yeah, especially the older you get, you have more things that change your life. Yeah. And for me, I have an inflection point in the year 2001, September 11. How many of you remember this case? I remember exactly where I was. I was, I was a regional content director at that point in time in a MNC. It's an internet media company. I was in charge of content. So uh, news like that, hit me and my team very hard and we went foot, went round the clock covering this event. And, but little did I know that it was something that happened somewhere far away on the other side of the globe but it impacted on me in a very, very direct and uh, I would say it was almost like a dislocation. Why? Because exactly one month after September 11, my superior asked for me in his uh, office and he said, Elvin, you have 60 staff across six countries. September 11 changed everything. Now you can only keep six people. You go ahead and fire everybody else. It was one month. And then I realized the the impact of this whole thing. The business world, wow, was shaken very badly. And the confidence of the advertising business was shaken very badly. It was a dislocation. And with a dislocation, it became an inflection point in my life. I started to take stock. I paused a little bit. And I asked myself, who am I working so hard for? Actually, who am I working for? I look up at a guy above me. And I wonder whether who is he working for? He look up one more level as a CEO. And CEO is also an employee. And I was wondering whether my one level higher, did he get another order that you have got eight directors, you can only keep four. You've got to fire the other four. You, you decide which four. So suddenly, confidence in the corporate ladder was uh, dislocated. And he stepped back and I said, look, I'm prepared to work hard. I've worked honestly hard all my life until then. But 
Does it mean that work hard, you will get somewhere? <laughs> okay, you will secure a future. So th those are questions that I never asked myself. So some point in time, every one of us, you may have your own story, but at some point in time, we ask ourselves, what is it that we are working so hard for? Day and night, day and night. At that point in time, I was 35 years old. 35 years old, mid-career, having a good so-called senior uh, executive job. And I was a young father. And that was my lovely girl. Okay. And as a young father, you think priority also very important. Some of you are young father here, young mother here. Uh, maybe some of those in the, in the Zoom as well. At that point in time, what was really important for me was my daughter. I want to give the best to my daughter. But in order to give the best, you must have also what? Money, right? Right? And my wife and I, my wife was a banker. I'm a senior executive. So we are two professional, earning quite well. But when we look at it, planning forward, we wonder how many more crises would there be besides September 11. In fact, at that point in time, my job is also, was also uncertain. So my number one reason for me to embark on network marketing was this, pure and simple, financial, not just financial sufficiency, not just financial comfort. It's about financial freedom because there's so many things that I want to do. At age 35, I'm, I was still pretty idealistic. I have a lot of things that I want to embark and accomplish in this short life. And I say short life because for me personally, I had another incident when I was seven years old. My mother got cancer and she died within four months. And I know that life is so short. In a blink of an eye, you'll be gone. So the question is, if you are prepared to be busy, what are we busy about? So first thing that I wanted when I think about financial freedom was my daughter. I want to grow up. I want to amass the amount of money in the bank so that if she wants to learn ballet, I, was, I can send her to the best ballet school in the world. If she wants to study university, I can send her to any university that you know, she aspires to go to. I wish to give her the best of life okay, that, that I am capable of as a parent. And not only that, as a young family, we aspire to travel. I'm, I'm someone who loves traveling. I'm an adventurer guy. I travel all over the world before uh, I had my girl and I wanted to bring her along. How many of you love traveling? Well, I tell you, I give you a little secret. Well, you love traveling, this business is fantastic. I'll tell you more about it later. I mean, in fact, you give some hint already, but that has given some hint already. Yeah. So I wanted to really have a fantastic family lifestyle that we can be proud of, that my daughter can grow up and really recount, you know, that we have, we are not lack of, we don't need to be extravagant. We don't need to, you know, drive the most fancy full car, buy the branded. No, we are not that. But we want to have the best of experiences as we grow. And then that's the other thing that concerned me, you know, having a mother who died and when I was seven years old. It's my aging parents. Okay, I had a stepmom who is really very kind to us. And they are, my, both my father and my mother are growing older, aging. So the question is, how to provide them with a really good life, abundance life. Not just every week go for fine dining. It's not that, yeah. But it's about really bringing them to good family holiday, giving them a really good, comfortable life. And most importantly, as they grow older and their medical costs might be climbing, Am I prepared? Am I prepared? A lot of people say, you know, you, in Singapore and in today's world, yeah, better uh, to die uh, than to get sick and don't die, you know. It's very expensive, yeah. So, I mean, for people who with uh, families, loved ones who suffer things like degenerative illnesses and came down in stroke or disability, you know what I mean, how expensive it is, yeah. So that was really important to me. And then not only that, household. But at that point in time, I was young, 35-year-old. My house has a mortgage to pay. My car is not pay up. There's installment. And then there's a lots of other things. Right? And it's also during that period whereby lots of friends getting married. 
we to give ang pao, right? Right? Lots of friends having their first born, a second child, you know. We could give uh, presents and all that. So all this adds up, if you like it or not. And then I was schooled in the idea of saving and investment. My wife was a banker, so she knew it very, very much. But the question is, how much can you save? You know? If you earn not a lot and then you spend uh, quite a fair bit of it, how much can you save? How much can you accumulate fast enough or not for my girl to have that kind of growing up? So this was my very first reason. And furthermore, today, I put aside 10,000 Singapore dollars for my personal growth every year. I don't mind flying to anywhere on earth to receive the best training and coaching and to, re to get the best idea, to learn the best idea from the gurus of the world. Because your personal growth will determine your net worth and your net value that you can create in the world. Agree? Right? And not only that, there's one more thing that to me is important and this has been ingrained in me from young is giving back to society. Charity work. I'll tell you more a little bit about that. But that was, at that point in time, in 35 years old, that was the last thing on my mind. Because if you can't even look after yourself, how you give to others? Huh? Okay? Or rather, when you give to others, how many of you have this experience? When someone asks you for a charity contribution, right? You actually want to donate $1,000. Well, not that you can't afford that $1,000, but you, you start thinking, oh, no, $1,000, huh? well, what, what do you need to cut away? You know? How many of you have, 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 have this kind of thought before? Don't be shy. Yeah, okay, yeah. But how good is this? Huh? If somebody asks you to donate, right? You don't even need to think. Huh? You say, what do you need? And then nowadays, no check. Huh? You just pay now to the person. Oh, that is good, right? Yes or not? Huh? Ask the person next to you. Why or not? Huh? Why not? Huh? To be totally generous about giving. And that was one of my driving factors in starting a business. Now the question is, what business to start? Why network marketing? I was lucky. Way back in 1997, when I was 31 years old, I met this gentleman. How many of you know him? Robert Kiyosaki. I didn't know him then. I was 31 years old. I was busy, you know, uh, working. And, and this guy, American accent, Japanese looking guy came to Singapore. He gave a talk in DBS Tower in Shenton Way. I can't remember how come I got to know about it, but I was very eager to learn, remember? Learning personal growth and development. So I didn't know much about this guy, but he said, rich that, poor that. I said, oh, I must go and listen to him. I sat down and listened to him and he planted a very interesting seed in my mind at that point in time. You know, he didn't grow immediately, but he planted that seed. He said to me, he says that, look, in um, all of us earn our money from E, S, B, or I quadrant. Now, all of us here also learn, earn money from this. He said the E quadrant are the most number of people because it represents the employees. Yeah, right? And then he said most employees, after a while, they may think about starting their own business. They thought that it's business, but it's actually a self-employed. In other words, you own a job. Okay? But he says he has this uh, advice. He says, no, no, small business and business is two different things. Most people confuse that. He said, what's the, what's the definition of business? He defined as that. And I thought it's a beautiful educational idea that he gave to me. That you own a system that works for you. And finally, he says, when you earn this kind of income, which he call passive income, you put it to work for you, you invest wisely so that the money starts working for you. Well, it's, it, it's not a rocket science. Sounds very logical. But there's deep, deep wisdom in this. The way he put it across. He said most of the people are trained and educated in school to earn active income. You work, you get paid. You work, you get paid. You don't work, you don't get paid. Employee does that, right? Well, some of us here even employ people, which is normal. Yeah? And 
I also started in the employee quadrant. But I wonder if I'm staying in this for my rest of my life, then I cannot stop. First thing is I cannot stop. Secondly, the thing that motivated me, the reason why I don't want to be an employee, I hate to wait for leave approval. Because I love to travel. I love to bring my girl to wear and all and all that, right? So, how many of you got leave cancelled or not approved before? Yeah. Oh, that, that thing really irritated me. Yeah, I say, I'm entitled 21 days at that point in time. I have 21 days of leave. But you got to tell me when I can go and when I cannot go. I cannot tahan that. Okay, so that was one of my motivation that I want to get out of the employee quarter as soon as possible. And true enough, I started my first business before I met Robert and I thought that I was in business. It was a rock climbing business. So I teach people rock climbing and I could design climbing wall for schools and organizations and I get paid for that. Oh, I thought I was in business until this night, that night, Robert Kiyosaki killed my dreams. Because he says that he asked the audience a question. It's just now I'm asking you. See, if you think your business is business, can you work at your business for a period of time and after that it run by itself? If it cannot run by itself, it is a small business. A dentist, for example, you open a clinic. Can you stop drilling teeth? You cannot. If you don't stop drilling teeth, you have no money. A yoga teacher, if you teach yoga and earn a living, you don't teach no more, or you're too old or you're too sick to teach, no income. Or you go on holiday, no income. So that night, I had a long talk with my wife because my wife and I attended his talk together. And at the end of it, we concluded, we concluded that our rock plumbing business is a passion, the passion thing. We do it if you're happy doing it, but it's no longer going to be my financial vehicle. So that actually was very helpful. It frees our mind. So, okay, now I'm not, going to, I'm not going to just focus on just doing it blindly and just work hard, work hard, work hard and hoping that it will work. It won't. Because Robert says that you can work hard at something that doesn't work and it will, your working hard will not make it into a working mechanism. And I can relate to that. You can be a grab driver, for example. You can work hard 24 hours, don't sleep and drive around, but it will never get you passive income. So when I decided that, I make a space in my head, okay, to now allow something new to enter into me. But nothing came in. The year was 1997. Robert came, gave a talk. He flew all back to America. He was not here to guide me. I had no idea how to start a business, how to, how to create a system, how to own a system that will work for me. Not so brilliant. I don't have the experience. Until, until I came upon a chance of network marketing. And of course, I, mean, I wasn't so smart to figure out the whole thing about network marketing. Okay? So the arrow there simply says that whether you are in the E quadrant today or you are in the S quadrant today, Robert encourages us. Keep your mind open to seize an opportunity that will allow you to get into the B quadrant. And when your system, you build it up, it may take you three years, four years, five years, or whatever. But once it builds it up to that extent, it will start to give you the kind of income and the quantity of income that will allow you to invest at the same time, continue to generate from the business quadrant. And then you can come to a point which you call financial freedom. I thank Robert very much. This 1997 is a long, long time ago, but an idea planted, allow it to germinate and make something, make a life for me. Yeah. So I was very lucky in 2000 before that. So I was wondering, okay, after Robert's uh, education and after my September 11 case, I was pondering, how do I move towards financial freedom? 
Do I go for a better paying job? Do I try to climb the corporate ladder a bit higher? Maybe towards a C-suite, towards a CFO, towards C whatever O, you know, towards a CEO maybe one day? Or do I start a business? Now, I had a little bit of experience with a traditional business whereby I started that rock climbing business and I realized it's not, not something I like. What other traditional business? Joey, remember we, we talked about food business, right? right? We had uh, uh, a couple of years ago, we went to Kofu, you know, just here, the food court. And uh, there was this new store, Western. They make steaks, uh, chicken cutlets, and whatever. Not. Oh, it was run by a few youngsters. They're young and they're non Singaporean. They are from Myanmar, remember? Right? So we decided, hey, let's go and support these young people. They're young entrepreneurs. Huh? We are always game in supporting young people. So we went there and we ordered our food and we started chit chatting because it you know, take a while to fry the chicken and all that. So Joey asked that gentleman, he says that, hey, you guys are young and uh, how much does it take for you to get started in this? How much is a rent, by the way? And Joey, do you remember what he said? Yeah, what was the rent for one month? 15,000 Singapore dollar a month to rent that Kofus. So when we knew that, when we sit down and eat, we were asking ourselves, how many steak uh, just to give to the landlord? No? Of course, I mean, there is value there. Like, you know, not that. But sadly, how many? After, I think, I think about less than six months, they are gone. So I wonder, these people, how much they save, whether they take a loan to give it a try, and then that risk, maybe after that, they'll go back to E-quadrant and work for someone for the rest of their life. So finding a business possibility, really, I, I really encourage you. Yeah, do your homework. Okay, speak to people who have been there, done that, and even people who have been there but unable to do that. Okay, to find out what might be a good possibility for you. Then I was contemplating, hey, they say franchise business. I attended a lot of seminars about franchise. Okay, franchise for, you know, you name it, yeah? Starbucks, and McDonald's, Burger King, and then Yakun, you know, and all that. So I thought, hey, maybe franchise business. Because I don't have business experience, maybe I write on to something that has already been developed. I run the show. I was almost ready to take on a cake franchise. Situated where? Golden Shoe Car Park. How many of you know Golden Shoe Car Park? You just arrived in Singapore, right? That Golden Shoe Car Park is gone in uh, Shenton Way. Yeah. Got long gone, yeah? 350000 Singapore dollar. Of course, you got to pay for the franchise fee. You got to pay for all the stock, right? The cakes and everything on an ongoing basis. You got to hire people. You got to rent, renovate the place. And if you are very, very confident, you... If you can get the rent, you better get three plus three, right? You rent for three years and then you have three years optional. But all this is about money. The investment is huge. Yeah? And it's an ongoing thing. And then I discover what they say. Oh, if you're going to own this franchise, that's all you can sell in that locality. You can't go to Topayo. If, if you want, can. You pay another 350000 to have another outlet, you know. So I thought, hey, this is uh, very limiting, very restrictive. Luckily, I did not go for it. Because roughly around that time, I met some, really, I met some people, friends who have made an impact and now have become lifelong friends. And you can, you can literally meet these few people here. Okay, except for the young girls, lah, yeah? Okay. But then one or two of them are also considered young girls. Lah. Yeah. I want to say a big thank you to Pauline and Tony. Could I invite Pauline and Tony to stand? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's Pauline, that's Tony. 
on the first night where I came to a seminar like that, okay, I knew no, I don't know many people like most of you who came for the first time, yeah? but Pauline and Tony were the ones who shared with me, opened my mind, and they shared with me how the business system work. And when they shared with me that, Robert Kiyosaki came back. Remember the seed that was planted? Start to germinate a little. Ah, now I could sense the possibility of owning a business system. And then subsequently, Josephine Chan. Can I invite Josephine Chan to stand and wave at everybody? She has been instrumental in my success in this business as well. So Josephine is the mentor of Pauline and Tony. So these three people and I, we started, or I started with them. They coached me, they mentored me. And uh, our little girls were around the same generations and we all grew up. And Josephine at the time was also in young 30s. In her young 30s, she shared a lot of my kind of reasons, okay, to build a business that will stand on its own, that can grow on its own, that can give the best of, of, uh, of opportunity to our children. So my girl had just graduated last month from the UK in sports science, and she's just started work with uh, Decathlon. And Josephine's daughter uh, is still in uh, NTU, and we'll be graduating in two years' time, yes? In two years' time. And that is beautiful. And I want to say that, thankfully, I have uh, uh, created enough saving for my daughter's university way before she was ready for university. And that is beautiful as well. So how, what did they train me on? I started as a rookie. I didn't know much. But what is important is I maintain a very open mindset and learner's attitude. I was a student. And when I was a student, they taught me a couple of things. She said that in network marketing and in this, in Avita, there are seven ranks. So if you relate these seven ranks, these are like consumers, yeah? VIP consumers, and then they go and get a bit more discount, and then they get a bit more discount and stop there. So there is a built-in loyalty customer or loyalty program here that allow anybody who join as a member to consume the product and consume for cheaper and cheaper as it buys more and more. So naturally, most consumers will be happy with that. But Pauline and Tony told me, you want to do this business, aim for the dotted line and above. These are what we call the enterprise builder. So you're not here just to get saving from consuming a product. You're here to actually build an enterprise network that can distribute the product all over the world. I like that. I like that. So I came in at a gold associate and within six months, I became a platinum director. And within three years, I went up to diamond president. And then eventually now I'm a perfect ambassador. This is how we grow. And the, basically the higher the rank you go, it signifies two things. Firstly, the network size your distribution channels, you want to call it that way. Yeah? You have people from all over the world, like what Badet shared, and many of us. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a while. Second thing is that because you have a lot of people, now you have that power multiplied many times over. It does not depend on one person being very talented or very hardworking. It depends now on the combined effort of an inter- I would say interdependent network all across the world. How many of you would like the international network? Oh, say to the person next to you, huh? Wow, your, your appetite very big, huh? It's good to have big appetite, yeah? So when you have a big network of people and that is what you get, yeah? And this is just a small sample size of the people. Okay, just for me to of make my points to you. So when I first got started, Pauline and Tony as well as Josephine taught me what are some of these products, what are their benefits, who might be your customer. So I started having my customer here. Judy has been my customer for close to 15, 16 years. 
Don has been my customer for over six years and uh, Monica has been over 15 years as well. But more importantly, is the people here. It's the people here. Joey, formerly a vice president of an MNC in consultancy, civil engineering. Been there, done that, a little bit of also tired of the mid-career, you know, climbing a corporate ladder. So he and I are very similar. And he and I are very similar in the sense that we love an international business. So he joins me. When was that, Joey? He joined 2007, 2011, 2011, right? Our friend, my... Friend from our master's program in UK at the same time, also fellow army uh, good friends, Chongping. Chongping joined me in 2015 and now he has grown a big network. And Wendy, Wendy, can you wave? Wendy has just become the diamond president, the newest diamond president in Avita. A round of applause. Yeah. And Tengi here, who formerly was an accountant. Joined me also in 2007 and then started to build her network into the Philippines. And now Jeannie has a huge network and growing network over in the Philippines. She's from Myanmar, but born in Myanmar, but raised in Singapore. But now she is an international business builder as well. Could I, could I do a little survey here? Uh, Wendy, do you know how big is Chongping's network now? A thousand people in her network. So it's not just one Chongping working very hard, but a thousand people, right? But you, when you have a thousand people, what does it mean? It means it is the what we call shared economy, isn't it? Many people, each one a little. How about Joey? Will you, will you share with any, everyone here? What is your network size now? I've lost count myself. 7,000, give me a round of applause. Eh? Yeah. So network marketing is a marathon business. It's not like you get 7,000 people overnight. It doesn't work that way. You started how many people? One person, just like me. I started one person, okay? My wife was my first uh, member, so-called. And then after that, my father. Right? After that, my mother, right? Yeah. Right? But if I've stopped there, it would just be my wife, my father, and mother, right? But it didn't stop there, it grew. I invited uh, Joey to explore this opportunity together with me and say, if you are you have like-minded, we have the same aspiration, let's work together. I support you, you support me. He has strengths that I didn't have. I have strengths that he may be lacking. And together, boom. But when together with more people and more people, then we share our expertise, we share our resources, we share our time, and we also share our success. And that is beautiful. Okay, and we went global. As a network grow across Asia, we started to enjoy multiple sources of income. In other words, I was bandied around and Robert Kiyosaki talked about that, but I couldn't figure out how to get multiple sources of income. I remember when I was doing the rock climbing wall project, I can't even do it in JB. Because in JB, you need a different company. My company in, uh, registered in Singapore wouldn't even be recognized there. So it's difficult to even earn an income from just across the causeway in Malaysia. But in Avita, we built an international network all across Asia. And we started to generate multiple sources of income from Philippines, Thailand, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and all the rest of the Avita countries that we enjoy having a presence in. And our business formula is really quite simple. We learn, we do it, and then we teach it to others. Now, you see, when you learn something and you do it yourself, only you gain. Agree? But if you can learn it and you do it and you're willing to teach it, but in the traditional business, you won't teach. Because when the more you teach, the more competitor you create. Yes? So we call business secret. So in traditional business, we don't teach because you keep 
you try you if you if you want to start a coffee shop business, you go to Mr. Yakun and you ask Mr. Yakun, hey, friend, friend, I have been drinking your coffee for 10 years. No, will you teach me? You think what he will say? <laughs> right. He won't teach you, but he will say, Why my franchise? But in Avita, we teach it. And because you teach it, you create multiple leaders in, into your network. And then the share economy kicks in. This is how we grow up our business. So none of us here is what you call like superstar. There's no superstar in Avita. Every one of us is just equally common and normal as the person seated next to you. But what is uncommon is the platform that I'm in, the platform that we are in, that allow us that kind of system that works for us. Bam! Exactly what Robert Kiyosaki said. From 1997 until 2002, how many years was that? Five years, isn't it? Five years. It took me five years. Okay, open my mind, open my heart. Look, look. At first, I thought it was uh, e-commerce. Okay, if then the e-commerce came, and then a dot-com bomb, and then I was told to fire all my guys. You know, it got me really depressed for a period of time. You know, finally, I decided I'm going to get up. I'm going to work hard, but I would rather work hard on my own, building my own enterprise. And what happened after that? We start to see results. Okay, we start to see results. And this is a very touching, uh, it's a very touching, uh, oh, here first, yeah. This is Jeannie, I told you. Jeannie got into the network in 2013. She bought two boxes of Salogen, flew back to Philippines, Manila. She says she wants to test the product. We say, fine, buy back, test the product. And after that, she's, she couldn't stop buying Salogen because all her friends around her wanted to order. And soon, by the end of the year 2013, she became a platinum director. Remember I say platinum director is a business builder position? And after that, she started to build her network earnestly. Subsequently, she even closed her anti-aging clinic to focus on network marketing business under Avita. And as a young platinum director, she made $22,000 in the month of uh, February 2015. And it was pretty cool, right? It's pretty cool. And, uh, and she made a difference to many people's life. And one of these person I want to talk about is this lady who inspired me personally a lot. Her name is Wendy Similano. She was formerly a clinic assistant. Uh, they call it minimum wage in the Philippines. In other words, she's earning a, a law, that minimum wage of $500 a month. Okay? When these commissions, after building the business for a while, in the month of no, January 2019, she collected her first so-called life-transforming commission of $2,000, almost $2,500. That's like five months of her salary, right? And it was a big deal. It was a big deal. Wendy was Wendy has a reason to embark on network marketing. She's she was someone who is totally who was totally um, non confident. I recall this was in twenty nineteen. I recall that in twenty must have been twenty seventeen. I flew to Manila to give a training to the distributor there. She was one of them. I'm not sure whether she's online. If you're online, you can, uh, you know, you can uh, re recollect this uh, remnants, this uh, experience. I went there for the training and I gave a talk in the morning and then come lunch break. We were having lunch together and uh, she was new. So that was, that was my first time meeting her. So I went there as I say, your name, Wendy. Oh, good. How long did you join? Oh, just started. Um, so to her, she is a clinic assistant. She's like a low level, as low level, right? Then she look at me, it's like a big, although I'm very skinny, you know, she look at me like a very big guy. Eh? So she was very frightened of me. Okay. So I say to her that, how was your experience with uh, any of the product? 
perhaps after the lunch, when we resume, you can share with everybody or oh, she look like like I've given her a mission impossible. No? And true enough, after lunch, when we gather, I say, oh, just now I mentioned that I wanted to get Wendy to share her story. Yeah? So Wendy, where are you? Nowhere to be found. They call her frantically, phone off. Then a couple of hours later, found her. Not, not in the office, eh? outside. She said, they're not come back. That was Wendy. That was Wendy once upon a time. And then what does this business do? We learn, we do and teach, we hope, we, we, I mean, we, we supported her growth and all. We, just last week, she was here to collect her platinum director award on stage. And uh, I sent her back to, to her and her husband to the hotel. So on the way, I asked her, so Wendy, what is your record at the moment now? Single month commission. I say, what is your record? With a tinge of shyness, she say, just over 10,000 Singapore dollar. I think it changes life. Not only it changes my life, it changes her life. And it changes many people's life as well. And there's this lady's uh, case from Singapore. I wanted to share with you. She's not here physically today because she is taking charge of the Zoom people. Okay. Uh, she's taking care of the Zoom as a host. Right. And that is Hui Kiong. You saw her check here. I circle out. It was a single month pay in June 2018. But it's not so much of the check, it's about her growth. Every one of us can earn that kind of money and more. The, the question is, what is the journey towards there? So I want, to, I want to tell you about her story. And I think her story represents many people's story as well. May not be exact the figure or whatever, but it's 26 years in the corporate job. She was from Moa, Malaysia, secondary school education, can't speak very good English. So in Singapore, it's pretty tough. Yeah, if you can't speak very good English and you don't have a certificate of sort, right? So she worked her way to $3,000 by taking a lot of night classes, her own private schooling and night classes and getting certificates so that she can upgrade it for their pay salary scale. And at the age of 45, she feels that this is a sin already. Nobody will employ her. Nobody will promote her in a sense. Uh, they will rather promote the younger people who have got higher potential in that sense. So that was the time where she joined Avita. Okay, tired of, again, mid-career, decided that, call it a day, quit. And the person who brought her in is none other than Diamond President, Kwok Siu Ling and Mary Kwok. Mary Kwok, can you stand up? And uh, so if any of you want to know more about her story, you can go and see Mary. So there was a time where she joined and in three years, with the support of the upline team, Mary Kwok and Siu Ling, they started driving up to Moa, to JB, to KL. But I suspect they're motivated more by the food now, along the way. You know? yeah, they stop at here, then they eat, and then they stop there and eat. Huh? But along the way, they built the business. And Hui Kiong created her record of 6,006 in the year of when she was 47. And having tasted a little, she was able to be bolder, more courageous. And on, at the birthday of 47, they sat down and set a goal for the 50th, which is 50, is like a milestone age, right? So she says that, I want to hit for 15,000 to be my highest monthly check. Of course, when she said it, it's like, you know, but don't know how to get there. But I'm very happy to say that in the month of July 18, she hit a record check of 34,000 in that single month. 34,000 is like almost a year's pay. Yeah, after CPA and everything, maybe even more than one year's pay, in that sense. So it changes people's life.
Today, Hui Kiong has an international network, so not only Singapore, Malaysia, but other countries as well. And she's now hosting the Zoom. Okay, doesn't matter whether you know English, your English is good or not, or whatever, it doesn't matter. You want to learn, there's always a teaching here that you can upgrade yourself and then grow into an international enterprise builder. I think that's, that's really cool. Yeah, so it helps to create a kind of financial freedom, the kind of destination that each and every one of us aspire to. So this was, this was, this, this check presentation happened just what, two days ago? Was it two days ago? On Monday, on Monday, yeah, where we had a international leaders training. So a lot of international people were here and I was very glad to and report, okay, that July, last July, just what, two months, one month ago, last month, was a record-breaking month for Avita in our 15th year. In all our 15th year, it was a record-breaking month. Right. As more leaders come in, we have more talents. And when you have more talents, you are almost like having many CEOs, not just you being a CEO, you have many independent CEOs, all are focused, motivated to go for their dreams and realize their goal and building their teams concurrently. So every one of us eventually grow into like a conglomerate whereby we have multiple CEO of SBU unit all growing at the same time. That was what, is, what was happening. And I would like to point you to this lady here who created a record. $80,000 commission for the month of July. Hallelujah. Wow. You know. Okay. Remember, she only got started in 2013. She brought the business back to Philippines in 2014. Philippines is 110 million people country. Singapore. Thailand. 70 million. Malaysia. How many million? 40 over million, you add up together, whoa. and that is what is exciting. So financial freedom must ride on to the right market potential. And the right market potential is collectively all the countries that is within the Avita system. And the Avita system is continuing to grow as well. But I'll tell you one thing, there are many ways to make money. You sell drugs, you sell cigarettes, you sell whatever, you know, you do porn also, you can make money. Yeah. But the question is, if you're willing to work hard, are you working at something that you can find meaning in? I'm big on that. And I feel that I'd rather spend my time doing something that's really meaningful because I only have a short span of time in this world. So are you working for the sake of just earning money? But disregarding the meaning of your work. I've, I've seen so many, in 20 years of my career here in network marketing, I've met so many successful doctors, but they're not happy. They have, they're very rich. They own property. They stay in a big house, drive a big car. But in private, they told me, you ask me, I would rather have been a dancer. But my father told me, Doctor is what makes money. You get the money, but you lose the meaning. I'm not sure whether that is really... So it, what is the meaning for your life? So for me, I find a lot of meaning in whatever I do here because I'm creating real value. I'm creating real value because I am a coaching entrepreneur. And this is one of the key things that in our training, we invite in all our distributors. Every single one of us, but that had just started not too long ago with us. Today, she does this coaching because she has network in Nigeria, and India, okay, Singapore, New Zealand, and, uh, and UK as well. So she uses Zoom to bring her coaching to impact on this network across the world. And we can all do that. Now, it's, it was harder to do in 2002. Can you remember 202? What was it like the world? We were using Walkman to record talks, yeah? 
Okay, we were using photocopy machine to photocopy thick and then we read. No, YouTube was started only in 2005. And when YouTube started in 2005, there was not a lot of content, unlike today. So today, the world is more connected than ever. Today, the world facilitates network marketing more than ever. We are in the golden era of connecting, building, and creating an interconnected international network. Question is whether you find meaning in doing that. I find a lot of meaning. I'm, I told you my five reasons are very personal to me. I hope it reverberates with you, right? So to me, coaching entrepreneurs is something really important. I've learned how to do something, how to build a business. I share my experience. With it. Not that I'm better than you. It's just that I've been doing it for a while. I know what works and what doesn't. And then I share with you. And then I say, please pay it forward. Share it with your partners. And that's how we can grow collectively. And we are also a wellness advocate. We share the goodness of our products with our friends. And then we help them to get better with their health. Not dependent on drugs, not dependent on medicine, but allowing their own body healing mechanism to be reawakened so they can, they can be healthier without dependent on artificial drugs. I'm not saying artificial drugs is no good. There is a use for that. But if you can depend less on that, you can have a healthier body through the stimulations and through the nourishments of your cells. And that is really good. So we, does that, we do that everywhere we go. And we have a lot of testimony. I want to go too much into the product. Okay, there's just so many, whether it's a, uh, people who are recovering from stroke, people who, have, who wants to avoid gout conditions, you know, attacking them every now and then, suffering. You know, and they, of course, there are ladies who you know, want to look better and look at this lady here, Betsy, you know, she's looking much better. And we have doctors. So this is a sports doctor. He operates on the national athletes. And he says that Salajan helped the, his patient, all the national athletes, to recover, recuperate, and to be stronger and to also recover from their injury much faster compared to if they just rely on surgery and operation only. So we have a lot of a lot of testimony. And there's this, this beautiful merchant lady here. I want to blow up the, the, the picture for you to see because it's rare for us to invite her to share. But tonight, we get to hear her story from none other than her own son who, who lives in Melbourne, but he knows that you are here. So he flew in to tell his mother's story. So ladies and gentlemen, we, we have never heard from Du sharing the mother's story. I would like to invite Du to come forward. Du, come forward here. Yeah. Thank you. Please. Thank you. Uh, Back in 2017, when we were living in Singapore, the whole family, uh, my mother had a stroke. Uh, so at that time, she was uh, almost wheelchair bound. She couldn't move around uh, by herself, needed support. Uh, so subsequently, 2018, we decided to uh, relocate back to Australia as a whole family. Um, and then in 2019, we were very fortunate that um, Avita came to Melbourne and uh, Diamond President uh, Kok Suling shared with my wife uh, about Selogen and how it could help my mom. Uh, subsequently, we uh, let her try it. And after seven months, she went from a wheelchair assist to able to walk on her own. Um, so for us, it was uh, the independent, having her gaining back her independent, living her own life. And for us, in a way, was uh, having our own independent where we do not have to look after her. So that was also a blessing. Uh, 
Um, so after having tried the product and able to share with some of our friends, uh, so now we are able to build an international business uh, in not only in Australia, but uh, throughout uh, Southeast Asia. So at the moment, we're also looking to expand into market like Thailand and Cambodia. So that is uh, something that we look forward to. And I think again, was that we thank you, uh, Avita and all the leader that has uh, helped us, guide us along the way. Wow, fantastic, isn't it? One thing, wait, wait, just one more thing I want to interview you was that uh, the moment you and your wife decided to actually embark on building this business, not just buying it as a consumer for your mother, I recall that at that point in time, it was, it was the start of the COVID. And Melbourne has the longest lockdown. And two of you didn't leave your home. And actually, you built a thriving business out of your home. How was that possible? Uh, it was possible based on the fact that was it, uh, there was a platform, Zoom. And through Zoom, we, we plug into the system. Uh, we listen to our uh, leader, our mentor, like uh, event like tonight with the EBOP and also uh, the Empower Night. So through that, was it uh, we ask questions, we learn, we share. Uh, from there, was it we sometimes we make mistakes, but then was it having make a mistake, we come back, <clears throat> we ask the leader, what should we do? Okay. And from there, was it we get guidance along the way, and then and you build an international enterprise. Yes. Could I ask you one more question? Because you were a business owner yourself. Correct. Could you share with everyone what business were you in? Uh, I was in the design and built uh, uh, bungalow. What, what would you say to be like an investment or capital investment for your kind of business if uh, you were going to advise someone to get started in it? Would be half a million, if not more. Half a million a lot, uh, if not more. And was it like half a million for you to build your Avita business? Go international? No, it was not. It was not. It was something that uh, once you understand the whole business, uh, the network marketing, the Avita business plan, it was a no-brainer. It was, it was a no-brainer. It was something that is, uh, I was telling uh, Yun Ting, which has uh, happened to be my upline, that was a, it is something to explore and something to look into and something that we can build on. Thank you. Later, you can find out more from him, yeah, in person, yeah. Thank you, Du. And of course, if Du helps the mother, of course, I also help my parents. Okay, and that is my parents. Um, my father is 86, turning 87. My mother is in the late 70s. And we all, and I, I have this to say to you, if you, your parents are still alive, this is the best gift to our parents, to anyone aging. Yeah, you want them to age gracefully, healthily, proactively. You want them to slow down their aging. You want to slow down any form of degenerative diseases. At their age, they don't aspire to like, travel the world, or eat rich food every week. You know? What they really treasure is like what Du just said. They can walk independently. They can, be, they can don't give the kind of worry to their children. And to many of us, we feel that that is what we want to give to our children. And that's the reason why I've been on Selogen for 13 years, okay? Because my mother died of cancer. And I know that in my cell, the DNA, there is a propensity for cancer. I hope that Selogen, I can push it back, delay it. With a stroke of luck, maybe totally do away with it. So to each of you, the meaning behind the work, okay? And this is why I love network marketing. Because we could do this business anywhere. We don't need an office. I don't need a warehouse. I don't need to hire people. I don't need, what, 
have a whole bunch of machinery or apparatus and that sort of things. Anyone can get started. No need half a million. Don't, don't even need what. Uh, tiny pinch of whatever he just said. Okay, and yet you can grow international. And that's really exciting. So all my friends are able to, okay, if they are concerned about their health, they become my customer. And some of them, after becoming a customer, would then ask me, hey, it helps my, exactly like what Yun Ting and Du. Yun Ting and Du started off purely as a customer. The only concern is the mother's condition. But as a result of that, they sense a business opportunity. And because Avita has an open platform to anyone joining us, we do not care about your qualifications, whether you're good in English, Chinese, or whatever. Not. We don't care about your background. We don't interview you and have the kind of like five interview, you know, passing on from one to the other. We don't negotiate your salary because we don't pay salary. Okay. We share a percentage of the commission with you, the revenue with you. That's really cool. So anybody can join me in my business. Unlike if I were to continue with my rock climbing business, only people who know about rock climbing will be able to be my partner, isn't it? So in this case here, I have people who have a really little gathering in a restaurant and started to build their business. We have people who... This is Kate, he's an aircraft design engineer. In fact, today is his uh, birthday. He'll be here soon. Later, we can share a cake together. Okay. And he share his business experience with the people who are listening. And we love food. So we, we talk business and we talk. Uh, we, we, are, we are coaching entrepreneur over a meal and we are, uh, we are wellness advocate over a meal as well. Okay. Pauline is, uh, is a is a professor in this uh, division. Yeah. Now, there's another reason to me is in order for us to build international business, the company system must allow for it. Remember Robert Kiyosaki said having a system that works for us? The system must allow for it. So the system allows for a borderless and limitless business opportunity. And this is what is really exciting. And when that happens, you ask yourself, how big is the market? Now, this is a, is a logical thing. You can do your analysis. How big is a wellness business? You are in the uh, pharmaceutical. Is the industry huge? Very huge, yeah? Very, very huge. And after COVID, the awareness is... Yeah, it's gone. Everybody knows. COVID is not going to be a last virus. Monkeypox is now coming up. Maybe later on, got donkeypox or other pox as well, right? There'll be many other things that will come along. What is your final line of defense? Your immune system. So if you want to build up your immune system, better start early. Don't wait until you get it. And then even doctor can't save many of the patients who got COVID. So it is the people who have a strong immune system. People who can age slower or who have less of all the other problems, diabetes, you know, uh, you know, fatty liver. In fact, most diseases are chronic in nature. Agree? In other words, it's totally preventable. Okay? It's totally preventable. The question is whether you know how or not. So this is a whole series of products in the Avita. I want to go through the detail of the product. You can find it out for yourself. I want to tell you that if you are okay, in the sure. right industry, it's a sunrise industry, then you go where the tide flows. Yeah? The question is how hard you work and how fast you work. Okay? You work slow, okay. also can. You work fast, Thank also you. can. It's your own decision. What is your aspiration? And how big is the market? Avita at the moment now is in nine countries and growing. 700 million populations. Of course, it's very small compared to my friend here who comes from India. India is 1.4 million. Billion, yeah, billion, right? I tell you, when you add one more zero, I also don't know how to, I can't contain in my mind, you know, it's, it's so huge, you know, right? In India, every day, 70,000 baby born.
And I would like to say to you, I see the birth rate in another anger. It also means that every day, there are probably hundreds of thousands of people approaching 40, 50. Who, what are these people looking for? They don't want to age. They want to maintain their youth. And as far as possible, if they can slow down their aging, so they can live more good years. Not necessarily live longer, you get what I mean? But live more good years. Healthy. Proactive. Yeah? And do things that they like to do. They work so hard to earn their money. And then they're not going to give away all the money to the hospital, right? They want to use the money to do good, to enjoy themselves, and do, do whatever their dreams, their aspirations. How many people actually spend so long building, 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 after that get all kinds of problems, and then after that, then when they die also, they have a big bad bank account. Don't think, I think the awareness is now a lot higher, okay? People want to get some of our solutions. The question is, who they're going to get it from? We all hear this word, product can talk. It's true, when you think the product, product can talk to you, yeah? But product cannot walk. That's why you need human like us. You have to share. Right? If the product can talk and walk by itself, Avita no need any one of us. We can all go home already. So you require leaders, you require entrepreneurs. Get out there and say that, hey, look, India, 1.4 billion. How do we? No need 1%. 0.0001%. I'm happy like bird. Because I think it will... In terms of financial freedom, I'll be free for three generations. We're not greedy. We don't need to be a multi-billionaire, right? At the end of the day, I always say, right, live full but die empty because when you die, it was nothing. I must well give, right? So don't start giving only on your last breath. Start giving every day. Such a good day, yeah? So this is what the massive amount of market size, and growing. And these are the new platinum director who came last week, last Friday, went on stage and received their award. Now, it's not an ego thing, but it's very, very important to give recognition to each and every one of them. We have uh, Dr. Angie Recto here from the Philippines. This lady here is a lady sitting behind. She's a TCM physician from Singapore. Okay. And here we have a judge from the Philippines. She's a judge and she's doing this business and growing her business. And this is a school principal. We have people from all walks of life. And all walks of life means a lot. It means that every single one have a great chance to succeed and realize the aspiration here. Oh, how big is that? It's not a business that is catered only for people with a certain certificate or graduated from certain school at a certain level or whatever not. It is an equalizer. To me, having a leveler business that is open to everyone is very important in this world now. Reason, and I say that when I give the talk for the young entrepreneurship, the young people of tomorrow will be having a harder time than today, than our generation. World being disrupted. The technology is changing so fast. Whatever you graduate in, in your, in your discipline, give it five years, it will, be, it will be outdated. So I wonder, and I say this, and I talk, discuss about this with my daughter a lot. I say, your first job, go, Decathlon. You go and work and you, 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 you have a sense of big cooperation because the size of a big cooperation, how it works and all that. But at the end of the day, what is it? You want to be your own entrepreneur so that you can build something and you can build something younger from young. Oh, you know, I started building this network at 36. Josephine started building it at 34. We are not financially free. Can you imagine we started building at 29? Well, we have a much more, yeah, I would say uh, our wing can spread much, much more with a bigger freedom. Freedom is huge for me. I hope it's huge for you too. And my number four reason is personal development and growth. I'm big on that. And I believe that there's a guru who said, you can only be as successful and earn in 
earn to the level of your personal development. How many of you agree with that? Yeah? So invest in your personal growth and development is number one. Because no one is going to invest in you. Your employer will invest in you for the function that you're going to perform for the company. Yes or not? Uh, you can think that nothing very rigorously. Yeah? But your own personal growth is really, really crucial. And I'm very glad in Avita, this is one of our number one priority and number one emphasis. I call it the experiential MBA program. It's not master in business administration. It is master in business accomplishment. Isn't it? It's not, you're, not, you're not administering business for some, some company or whatever. You are now accomplishing your own business. And we do that by a series of steps. First and foremost is we do training. We do training in Philippines. We do training here. We do training everywhere. We do training on the Zoom as well. Mentorship is one-to-one. -one. I was very grateful to Pauline and Tony and Josephine for mentoring me when I, was, when I was a rookie. And eventually when they mentored me enough, I don't need to drink the milk anymore. They can drink milk, like very funny. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't need hand-holding from them anymore, right? So now I start to handhold other people while they handhold another leader to be. And that's beautiful because now this is where we can multiply the network growth. So mentorship is really important and we have team support. Like now, we have a team that's supporting us. Some of them are in the room, okay, running the, and making sure that the IT, the Zoom, everything works. Okay, we have people, Belvin is sitting there, you know, we're recording and making sure that the projection is put onto the Zoom. And subsequently, all this thing is going to be be put on YouTube so that other people can benefit even after tonight. So everything happened. There's a team of people behind doing that. So team support is really important. It's very different from my solo time when I was like a, a rock climbing instructor or building rock climbing wall. My business, my business, nobody else's business. Nobody's going to come and help me. Myself, my wife. Okay, that's it. We got to just do everything ourselves. Okay. And then you have business event like tonight and many other business events that is uh, in the region. We have a regional network of people that we can tap on. So how many of you have friends in, from Philippines? I tell you, after this, after my talk, network with Badet. Network with Gina here. How many of you have friends in Australia? Please turn around and network with Du and, uh, and uh, Yun Ting and also Pauline who lives in Perth. So every one of us are friends all over the world. But when we can tap onto each other, your power multiply. You are not dependent on what you know and what you don't know only. Okay? So this is really important. And then, most importantly, we have a business system that run the entire business. I don't need to create a system myself. I don't need to find an IT guy and make the program and compute the finance and the commissions. Then I've got to work out how much to pay then all the capital, the currency fluctuation, and all that, all that things are done. The corporate, the logistic, the warehousing, the, the whatever is everything done behind this glass door. That is a company. So we partner with a company. We are not employee, we are distributor. So the company created a system. It's very similar to like Grab created a system that allows all the people with cars to partake in the transportation so-called private hire kind of business. It's very similar to Airbnb, another share economy darling in the world, right? They created a system. They don't own any property, but they allow us who have property and who have a room to rent to write onto that system. So in this case here, the company created a system that allow all of us who have connection all over the world to build a thriving business in partnership with the company. And that is the spirit and that is what network marketing is really all about. Let me emphasize, network marketing is not network selling. Far too many people. Are. I've been in this business for 20 years. I can tell you very honestly, I meet 10 people who, have, who say that, oh, I have been in network marketing. I've done MLM. Nine and a half of them 
or just doing selling. Nothing wrong, but not enough. Imagine you just sell and sell and sell. You can't sell your way to success. But you sell at the same time you build your partnership team. That is how. But partnership team, people will join you in the business. So what if Joey is a vice president of a civil engineer engineering company? He doesn't know how the network is done. You, you are HR director of an international lift company. Doesn't mean that she knows about network marketing. So whoever joins you, you needed that, this MBA program to support their growth and development. Some will fly, some will crawl a little bit, some will grow at their own pace, but everybody grown. So everybody can become a CEO of their own rights. Oh, I love this. I think we are creating entrepreneurs in this world and bringing this into, that's why in Philippines, we are so, we're so excited because in Philippines, there are people who really, they work very hard, very hard, two jobs, three jobs, they can't make their ends meet. Minimum wage. But if they're willing to learn, we take them on. We guide them, we train them, we empower them, we support them with our team and then allow them to lift. And that is great. We do this. We are mentoring. And mentoring means passing on knowledge, which is easy to learn. You now you can learn it even on YouTube and all that. Passing on skill, which is less easy to learn. How do you talk? How do you present? How do you explain? How do you do whatever? How do you network, for example? But besides that, when you have done the above successfully, you build a team, then you need it to team bond. Organize your team. Build them up. Empower them. Empower them with the leadership. It is okay. Everyone can lead your own style. There isn't one DNA for leaders. Everyone's a leader. Mompreneur. How many industry looks down on housewife? Oh, you've been out of workforce for 10 years because your children are growing up. You're out of touch. There's no job suitable for you. And they ended up being a cashier in the NTUC, in the supermarket. I say it's a waste. And these are the talent that we're tapping. How many of you here call yourself once upon a time housewife? Come, hands up. Okay, hands up. Everybody look around. Come on. Yeah, housewife. Oh my goodness. But today, what do you call yourself? International mompreneur. And I think you can stand tall here and give a different kind of talks and training that I am not capable of doing. You can touch and empower so many other women folks that I cannot. And this is so powerful. And you can call it mompreneur and you can, you can relate to everybody else. Minimum wage, wage worker. Then you can have the corporate executive. You can have the people who have been there, done that as a CEO, business owner, whatever. Everybody coming here and we learn from everybody. The richness of experiences. Joey, when you were in the civil engineering line, who, what kind of people you meet? Engineer? Architect? Project manager? And then engineer again? And then project engineer again? And then architect again? And then project engineer again? And then architect again? And then engineer again? Yeah! Right, right. So you become very, very good vertically, only one function. But here, what I love most is every one of us grow. Year after year, we grow. We may not have done a lot of things before, but you get your stage and then you grow. And when you grow, income grow, your network grow, your everything grow, your happiness grow. And when you grow, I encourage you, give. At the end of the day, our life is very tiny. Individually, how happy can you get? It's very, very tiny. I mean, that's my personal take. Lah, huh? I derive so much in giving. So I would like to share that it was because of Avita business that allowed me the chance to when to go 
and worked with the Hill Tribe farmers in Chiang Rai, and I created an equal social business with them. I don't earn anything from that. I just derive the satisfaction of helping the farmers connect with urban families like in here in Singapore. So families here in Singapore, if you would like to experience the beauty of rice farming, sign up with me. I wouldn't earn any single cent from you. All the money goes there. And you get to bring your children to go there and stay a week, learn the beauty of rice farming. And then suddenly, you realize that farmers are such a noble profession. I call it a profession. Without them, cannot feed ourselves. So please respect them and how they take care of the environment. Something that we don't learn. We don't learn in school. We don't learn in books. You can only experience it. And we were talking about your home country, a place that's very near to Bihar called Jharkhand. I had an opportunity to be there in 2011 and return there in 2012 and return there again in 2017. And these are tribal kids that have got no education. And I supported this organization called Tribal School Project that built school in the far deep interior. And you know, how deep is this interior? Hindu jewelry, you know, some of these names. Never seen the tree, never see the ocean. Never even see lakes, even some of them. And deep in there, these are the girls, they are the first generation learner. These are the boys. And I created one project called Solar Classroom. There are plenty of sun, but there's no electricity. So with today's technology, and we have a bit of entrepreneurial <laughs> experience, we created the first two solar classrooms. And now all the schools have solar classrooms. Ah, I tell you, yeah. Yeah, it's, the applause is not for me, but what I'm trying to impress is that there's so much possibility we can do. And it doesn't take a lot. But we created one success, two classroom success, help comes in. And then this organization there, I will build three more classrooms. This organization, I'll take the entire school. This organization, so 14 schools there now, 3,500 children every year get their education. Oh, hallelujah. This is beautiful. I love your country, Andy. Next time we should go together and we can do more things, yeah? And my pet project is in Africa, Kenya. If not for this business of Vita Network Marketing, I wouldn't have the time. I couldn't take the leave, remember? If I apply leave, they won't approve. Ah, oh, you, want, you want to go to Africa for one month? Okay, you go. No, you come back, Andy. Yeah, you come back. You want to lock in computer? Oh, invalid, cannot lock in anymore. Maybe your desk also, somebody else sitting down there. <laughs> Correct or not? Right? But this business allows me. But why I can go away for one, one whole month? And in 2011, I went away for one whole year. Because there are leaders. Remember, duplicating leaders and many, many independent people who are building the business for themselves, not for me. But because we are part of the entire network, everybody gains. And that was beautiful. Now, these are children who otherwise would be destitute. They're street children. Many of them are orphans, no mother, no father. Some of them do not know who their father and mothers are. They are picked off, rescued off from the street. They live together. 250 of them live in this home called Children's Garden Home. So since 2011, I've been building sponsor a child program. I've been giving a lot of money. I've been collecting a lot of... And now, because of some of these kids, like this uh, boy who is next to me, Victor, they are now older. They are 22, they're 24, they're 25 years old. I'm able now to coach them on becoming a social entrepreneur. So I've been coaching them. So by end of this year, how many of you would like to come to Africa with me? No need to hands up your hand, okay? No need to promise, okay? In November, I'll be there. I'll be going there for one whole month. I'll be hopefully launching two to three social business. And hopefully over the next few years, if I can help a few of these children, youth, to be able to stand up on their own. Do you know how the whole network marketing idea will go on? They will turn around and tell all their younger brother and sister, if I can, you, you can too. So I'm 
just a catalyst in the whole of making all this. We all can be. And if not for Avita Network Marketing, I could not realize this. So my giving, char charity, and philanthropy is going to be a bigger and bigger part of my own life going forward. And one of my pet projects here in Avita is to groom the next generation of bold, daring, courageous, confident youth entrepreneur, 35 years and below. How many of you are children 35 years and below? Welcome. The next time now we give a talk on the youth entrepreneurship program, we call it a YES program. You may invite your children to come, okay, and see if they can partner with us and grow international business for themselves. So I leave you with this, that we are all parties of our own life. You agree? No matter whatever your parents have given you, taught you or whatever, now we are all adults. We hold the paintbrushes. We dance our own dance. We sing our own song. We paint our own masterpiece. And I say, make it a masterpiece. But do you have a reason to create the best of the life for yourself? Some of us are not bad. I mean, you are earning well and all in every part of it. For me, I have five personal reasons that has determined my path from 20 years ago to today and going forward. None of these reasons change. None of these reasons change. So going forward, might you also find one or few of the reasons that will empower you to create the best network marketing business for yourself and many others to come. Thank you very much. And I thank you for allowing me to invest a little bit of my life in yours. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much, Kiyoyal, for a very, very inspiring story. Wow, let's give another round of applause to our Pearl Ambassador, Alvin Young. Wow, what a beautiful and inspiring story. I have a very simple key learning that I'm bringing home tonight, or I'm bringing home to the Philippines on Saturday morning, that the possibilities are limitless. Whether, you know, you have... You all, we all have our reasons, whether it could be financial freedom, meaning at work, borderless opportunity, personal growth, or even giving and charity. We all have our reasons. Regardless of that reason, we should always remember that there is an infinite possibilities out there that we can, you know, that anything we fix our minds on, we can do. Do you agree with me? Do you agree with me? Yes, that's the kind of energy we want to hear. So for now, probably and most likely the questions in your minds, how do we get started, right? I'm so inspired by PA Alvin. I want to give to charity and I want to use the Avita platform. How do I get started? The best time is to talk to your friends who invited you tonight. So I'd like to invite our guests to sit with those who, to, with the person who invited them. There are tables here and discuss on how we can personally get started. As for our friends on Zoom, you will be in your own respective breakout rooms and you can do the magic there and discuss the endless possibilities that Avita has to offer anyone who is willing to do the business. So that's all for now, folks. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Have a good day. Please stay safe and God bless everyone. See you again next time.